PRP has been around for many years. It's practiced in a lot of different fields, orthopedics, uh, certainly it's popular in orthopedics, different fields of dermatology. I give a very long, in-depth, maybe boring in some, some eyes, uh, description of PRP. I gave a Grand Rounds lecture to a department of dermatology years ago. So if you'd like to learn more about the nuts and bolts of the procedure, um, I'll include the, the link to that. The idea behind PRP is it, it, basically you're healing something without injuring it. Your platelet cells, when you get a cut, the first cell to arrive is a platelet cell. It sends out signals called growth factors, and those growth factors help recruit cells that are involved in the clotting cascade and the healing process. So again, we're healing something without injuring it. You're essentially trying to halt the process of cell death. Cell death takes place all the time throughout, throughout our each day throughout every moment. We have skin turning over every 28 days. Our bones are always breaking themselves down and reforming. Uh, so what PRP is doing essentially is halting that process of cell death for a duration of time. Here are a couple examples. Um, I'll start with, with women. This is a patient of mine. She was 28. Um, she wasn't bald up here. She just had a lot of miniaturized hairs. And after a PRP series, she went from looking like that to looking like that. Uh, another patient before and after, and I'll run through a whole host of different images. The procedure takes about an hour. You come in, we do a blood draw, spin it down in a centrifuge to get your platelet concentrate. We numb the top of the head so you don't feel anything. It feels like you're wearing an invisible helmet. Um, we stimulate the scalp with a microneedling device and that, that stimulates growth factor release. And then we do about 25, 30 injections of your own platelet cells beneath the scalp surface where the stem cells reside. Your head's a little bit red afterwards so um, we'll give you a hat or you can wear a scarf. Uh, you take it easy the rest of the day and then that night or the next morning you can shower, shampoo, and you look normal. You look normal the next day but it can be achy and tight. Like when you twist your ankle and it's achy and tight, you can have that achy tightness on top of your head. Um, that can last for two or three days. You can have some swelling in your forehead and temple but if you're good about icing after the procedure then, then you'll be fine. Uh, and the third risk, these are the risks, they're more annoyances, um, the third risk is that you can have some temporary thinning before it gets thicker. That's called shock loss. Um, when the new hairs are, are sort of pushing the old ones out of the way, uh, the, the old ones go, go through a cycle and, and they're coming back in. Other people aren't going to notice, but you can notice some thinning about two and a half to three weeks after the procedure, but it always comes back uh, about two, two to three months after the procedure. Oftentimes people don't have it, but it's good to be aware that it's a possibility. So those are the, the risks of the procedure. If you can find the exact same spot, we'll oftentimes take magnified images of, of a patient's scalp looking for a landmark such as a freckle. Uh, if we can find that exact same spot, then you can actually see how the individual hairs are changing. Ones can become twos. The hair coloration can become a little bit darker because the melanocytes, the cells that are involved uh, that provide color to your hair, those can be reactivated. The hair can become thicker, longer, fuller. Uh, sometimes people notice uh, ease of styling, an overall increase in volume. Um, seeing along the part line, the part line becomes a bit thinner. So the, the protocol that we follow is, is three sessions spaced one month apart and then taking pictures six months later. Uh, so January, February, March, and then you take pictures in July. They found that 62 of the 64 patients showed improvement. That's amazing. Why doesn't everyone do this all the time? every day. Well, importantly, only 55% showed clinically significant improvement, meaning you're standing across the room, you notice a big difference. People with the most hair loss are the ones that seem to have the best response, meaning the people with the highest percentage of miniaturized hairs are the ones that show the most improvement. Um, so what I've found is the people that seem to respond best to PRP are people with sort of generalized thinning, maybe people that have an intact hairline, but the, the thinning is pretty, pretty diffuse beyond that and all throughout. Those are people that can have a really nice response to PRP. The benefit from a PRP series of those three sessions spaced one month apart can be appreciated maybe six months later, but it can continue to improve for about 14 to 24 months. Then it may start to plateau and fade, but if you're a responder, you'll always be a responder. You can have another session um, a year and a half or two years down the road. This is a patient this is how she looked 13 years ago, and this is how she still looks today. She comes in every year for about a, a, a single session, about every year and a half. And so you start with a series, and then you can sustain it 
with, uh, with individual procedures down the road. Again, the, the great thing about PRP is it's your own cells. It's autologous. It's your own cells treating yourself, and that has a lot of appeal. The downside of PRP is it's your own cells treating yourself. And so there's a, there's a variable response that people can, can have to this procedure. That being said, there's three things that really do matter um, with respect to the PRP and getting the best results. The first thing is that you want to make sure you have enough platelets. Uh, there is an ideal concentration of platelets of 1.5 million platelets per microliter has been shown to maximally stimulate endothelial cells, the cells that are involved in, in hair growth. We are one of the few places that have a cell counting machine. So when you have your PRP session here, we do, we do a blood draw, spin it down, get your platelet count, your baseline platelet count. We set our centrifuge and calibrate it um, based on your own count to, to optimize that, uh, to, to achieve that optimal concentration. After the PRP is created, we do another count to confirm that you have the right uh, optimal platelet count in your PRP, and then we, we do the injections. You want to have the right amount of platelets. Number two, you want to activate the platelets. We use a calcium chloride solution to activate the platelets that, that releases, it maximizes their release of growth factors. Growth factors are the signals that are really involved in the, the healing process. So you want to have the right amount of platelets, uh, activate the platelets, and three, you want to prolong the benefit of, of the, prolong the release of those growth factors. And, and in order to accomplish that, we blend in an extracellular matrix powder called the ASO. You've seen in a lot of the, the headings of the slides, it says PRP and A-cell. Sometimes it says PRP and extracellular matrix. It's the same thing. I just felt like typing something different. Um, but the purpose of that matrix powder is it prolongs the benefit of the procedure by prolonging the release of, of growth factors. So those are three things that really do matter. A lot of places do PRP, which is great, but there are three things that really fundamentally set it apart with our practice um, and our patients are, are very satisfied with their PRP series as a result of those things. So what this will do is it sort of sets you up to succeed. It's really optimized the, 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 um, the likelihood that you'll have benefit from a PRP series. Thank you.